So again, looking at this, find the right training, you've got to look at your strengths, the stuff that you're actually good at, your skills. So you could have strengths that are outside your programmer and might do Java, right? But your skills could be in analysis or other types of areas. So you need to find where they fit with your job requirements and where it's a good fit for your business, for you and your skills, then you'll find a good training course that will actually help you succeed. When I was in India, um, for those who don't know, India is, is, you know, there's 450 graduates come out into ICT every year, okay? The barrier there is about certification. So for you to qualify to go to the next level, like a game, you must get certified, all right? So this is a problem, because if you get Java certification, then so are 100 other thousand people, right? Employees, when I was in India, you have to find a training course or something that makes you in the top 5% something that matches what you can do, which nobody else has. Because if you don't make yourself unique, then you're competing against masses, all right? So you've got to think about when you're doing training, of course it's got to be for the benefit of your company, but you've got to be doing something that's useful for you as well. So it's really, really important to find the right training. So about benefits. Well, having been a startup for two startups in the last 10 years, it's definitely a lot more stable being an employee. Being an employee, there's less stress, right? You don't have to worry about other things. Um, it's quite good there. Some tips to get ahead. Well, one thing about being employed, it's not actually about you. It's what you can do for your company, right? It's a bit cheesy, but that's true. It's one of the important things in knowing how to get ahead. You've got to make your company look good. When you do a project, it's about doing well for your company. You will benefit as a due course. Because if you do well on a certain project, if your company does well on that project, you do well as well. So your manager looks good, you look good. Then you're going to start realising that you can get stuff done and kick ass. Then you're going to put you on more important projects and so on and so forth. So, you know, step up, take a chance, go for those sort of interesting projects or maybe not so interesting, that can help you get, make the company look good, right? Second, politics. As coders, this is the, you know, well, the tech guys especially, we're a bit shy and we're a bit averse to all this politics stuff. All we want to do is code. But you've got to understand how that process works, how that business works. Because if you don't understand how that works, and what it takes to get somebody to do something for you, you know, how things work in the office, the office dynamic, or even with your clients, then it's gonna be really, really hard. Because you could technically do everything right, but if everything's not laid down in place for you to get it done, then you can never get it done, right? And as of what I find more and more when I go up in more senior roles, it's more about the politics than actually execution. Uh, execution is important, but it's getting people on side and making them happy. Right, so you need to understand all that sort of stuff. And another point that, uh, that I think people don't realise is in your career you cannot move ahead until someone takes over your role. So if you're thinking, oh man, I've been doing this testing of these bugs for six months. That's an important role, that's a role in that company. Someone must test the bugs. For you to get off that role, someone must replace you. All right? A good friend of mine was CTO of Weta. He came, we had a chat one day, he didn't know how to get out. It's just like, I, I'm not doing the job that I want, I actually want to do something else. Well, you can't actually leave until you find a replacement. It's your responsibility. You, you have to be part of it. All right? That's for a guy that's right at the top. But even you as programmers, you cannot move on from your existing role until you find somebody that can do it or work with your company to do that. It's quite an important thing because people think they have an expectation of, I've worked here long enough, I need to be, you know, I should be promoted and I get out of this job into another one, into another role. But you can't do that unless you work together. It's something that people forget. Right, so let's shift over to uh, consultant or contractor. So I've got the key skills there. Well, you need to be good at something, you need to be a master. You can't go out to the market and say, I'm, I'm going to be a consultant or a contractor, unless you're good at something. It could be programming, databases, project management. You need to be good at something. You need to have a skill with, with definitive experience, right? So, 
very few guys at your age can actually go out to market and say, yeah, I'm all that in Ruby, or I'm all that in Java. Right? You don't have the background to do it. You need to have a track record that people can, can trust. You need to be good at time management. Right? Very, very important. Because if someone's paying you by the hour, they want to know that you're going to do it. Right? So time management is really, really important. Negotiation. This came through from one of the people that I asked the question. He said he learned the hardest lessons to become a consultant because um, he went into deals where he didn't know what he was signing. And so, so he got pitched for a contract only to realise that they were an optional component. So they won the deal. He went in with a partnership, won the deal. They never got picked up. And he's like, but you used this in the pitch. I don't understand. Right, so you've got to understand negotiation, right? Um, like I know there are some people at Weta uh, that you can get hired for a role and then it goes off to the contract team and they hire and, and, they, and they negotiate. The first thing that says, well, it's Peter Jackson. So, well, your price is too high, it's Peter Jackson. They call it the Peter Jackson discount, right? So they expect you to drop your price because it's Peter Jackson. Regardless of what your ability is or whatever, you know, so you've got to understand that there's different negotiation methods. Career development. Well, it's all yourself. Right? You need to look at, you know, for a consultant, contractor, you need to keep up the game, but uh, your employer, as a, who's hiring you as a consultant, is not really interested in training you up on the kind of absolutely contributable <coughs> to their business. Um, so most of the time you need to be keeping up with your own game, so that's part of the thing that's really, really important about being a contractor. Well, lifestyle. Um, I know a guy who does Oracle DBA work and he serves six months a year. He lives in Wellington. I don't know how he does it, like, because he, he thinks it's great. He actually went and worked for a startup and this is why, why am I doing this? I could be serving for six months. But he, he always thought, maybe I should work as an employee or in a startup. He sort of feels bad, but at the end of the day, surfing rules. So you get to have a lifestyle. So there are quite a few guys that are very, very talented who are in this game. They have a certain lifestyle, they can work a set number of hours, they get well paid, and they can do that sort of thing. Choice. Um, this is a good and bad thing. So if, in this guy's example, he's a, a, a database guy, um, he has a limited choice. So there's the same old clients coming back to him saying you need to do this job. He's, I asked him, how, how exciting is it? Well, it's rubbish, it's horrible. I'll do this and he dreams of surfing. Right? So there's people like that and then there's others who are very, very good who get to choose. So I've talked to a few people, um, like some, uh, some of the guys that I've talked to are based overseas and they do uh, special web development and they get to pick all the contracts that, they, that come to them. It's a very, very very talented people, and people like Pepsi and very big brands come to them and say, we want you to build a website, right? So he says, we get to pick and choose, it's great. Right? But that's because he's like elite. So the choice can work in favour or not. Tips to get ahead, well, like the Swiss trains here, you need to be really consistent and dependable. Right? And that comes down to time management. If you say you're going to do something, you need to do it and do it on time. They need to be able to trust that you can do it. So we're... Um, they may not have got an employee as a contractor, they need to know that you can do that, you can do that job. Um, what I found with a lot of the consultants out there, that they're actually really active in a community, so they go out and help people. So they're known in the community as being a, a resource for, for people who are uh, to ask questions. So, um, one example for those that know this is the World Rail Group is Coz. So, Coz is one of these consultants. He is on this board all the time, giving out tips and help to anyone who asks. Right? He gives a lot of his time back to the community. Doesn't directly influence his job, right? But people have a sense of he's contributing. So, it's one of those things you've got to give back because then people know that you're the man when it comes to this, or the woman, when it comes to that particular skill. <coughs> it's getting out there and, and helping people. Um, last is sort of, you've got to think about the tools or stuff that you're selling. A lot of the people that I know uh, build components or libraries in this particular area. They build one bit that people really, really need. 